Hello everyone, Dr. Ziyad Ahir here. This video tutorial is about 2D analysis of a three-member plane truss in analysis and his workbench. So a plane truss shown in the figure, that is a plane truss shown in the figure. All members are made from steel with the modulus of elasticity of 210 gigapascal, Poisson's ratio of 0.3, and a cross-sectional area of 5 into 10 to raise power minus 3 meters squared. Although dimensions are not that realistic, but uh, I have saw it. Assume rectangular cross section, breadth as 50 millimeter and depth as 10 millimeter. And required is determine displacement components as node 3, that at node 3, element force for member 1 and 2. So, member axial member force uh, for 1 and 2. So, this is problem, uh, this is a modified problem from uh, problem 3.2 from chapter 3, development of trusses equation, a first course in finite element method by Dara Logan, 6th edition. So, this one, this is the problem. 3.27, a modified, uh, I have modified it a little bit. It is from chapter number four, development of beam equations from a first course in finite element method, Daryl Logan, enhanced sixth edition. So steps for analysis of three member plane truss in ANSYS workbench. The first is to start a static structural project then add material and engineering data, then select analysis type and geometry options in geometry, then sketch that truss or model that truss in design modeler, then material assignment and model type in geometry in model, then mesh and then selection of nodes and elements and then applying boundary conditions as supports then applied load and then solution in solution what parameters are required that is total deformation or directional deformation axial force in some members are required then solve then in result directional deformation results and then axial force results. So these are the steps which need to follow for truss analysis, 2D truss analysis in ANSYS workbench. First step is to start static structural project in workbench. So here in analysis system, double click on Double click on static structural and that is static structural and in that static structural you will see that the steps which I have used for that one for which I have just described and I am going to use those. Next step in engineering data add material and material linear elastic isotropic elasticity. So material is steel with the modulus of elasticity 210 and a Poisson's ratio of 0.3. So now in that project schematic, double click on engineering data. So default material is structural steel, but I'm going to add that a new material as steel. So that is steel and then linear elastic isotropic elasticity, drag it there. And then here you have Young's modulus and the units are Pascal, so 210 gigapascal 10 to raise power 9 and the Poisson's ratio is 0.3. So now these properties are added. So I'm going to save that project somewhere in my computer. So I saved that project and now material, save it and then close that one. So next step in geometry, select analysis type and then geometry options. So for that one, click on geometry and here you have 
to select line bodies and then analysis type is 3d although this is a 2d problem but in an analysis workbench there is some problem when you are going to solve that cross using 2d next step you need to start design modeler and for that one here right click on geometry and new design modeler geometry so that is now design modeler and in design modeler need to start sketch and then concept line from sketches and then you know wait so the units for that members that is in meters so in the design modeler units is already in meters mm -hmm. and then here the members are like as a multiple of 10 uh, like the dimensions are a multiple of 10 so what i'm going to do in the model first sketch go to setting grid show grid and snap and then major as 10 meter and then division is one so I am going to draw it in XY plane. So that is XY plane. So then, like if I'm going to put origin here, or I can put origin here. So that point is minus 30 towards, and that point is 20 towards that one. And then, so like. In this section line so that is 30 and on vertical axis it is 40 then from there another line there okay and the other one is 20 okay so now now that is sketch that is sketch so because i have here in the setting i have snap on so i will i'll have all that dimensions in in the standard one or you can add simply you can check the dimensions so that sketch is done so once that sketch is done so just click on that and it turn to yellow so sketched and then concept lines from sketches and generate so this one is selected now go to concept lines from sketches and then it says that base object so that turn to blue it is selected and then generate so now that one part is being generated so that is being generated so next concept cross section I'm going to name it rectangular and then generate it so here concept and then cross section rectangular here and that cross section is in millimeters so i'll select the units for that as millimeters and then you can see that that is a tiny rectangular cross section so i'm going to change its dimension so the breadth is 10 and 10 so for this one breadth is 50 and depth is 100 so breadth is 50 millimeter and the depth is 100 and then here you are like that is the so i'm going to rename that so that is renamed as rectangular and then generate okay so next is uh, select line body apply cross section and then generate so now here is the line body and it's a cross section so cross section i have just created rectangular okay and then generate it and then change units back to meter so that is now that part oh, is created so once it's created so you can save it and then close so i have saved it and now need to close that one so next step is to start a model 
and in model for that one need to click on the model double click on the model okay so that is now and is mechanical so the model so it takes some time to open that one and then this step four five six and seven so they are here so the first step in that model is to change the unit so you can either keep that as meter kilogram newton or millimeter kilogram newton so let's say i'm going to keep it as meter kilogram newton so or otherwise you can from here change the unit okay the first one in the model tree go to geometry then material assignment and then model type link or truss so by default in the steady state structural like so here in the line body so that is a default material which is structural steel to so change it to steel and then the model type for this one is b to so change it to link or truss okay next step is mesh and for that one here you have mesh and if i and that is default so let's say if i go to mesh and then generate that mesh so by default by taking some val value so it is going to mesh it but for fea for process so there must be one element between the nodes for bar elements there must be one element between the nodes so for that one so that mesh is not required so go to sizing and then sizing and then from here select edges with the box selection so those edges are selected and then apply so now you can see there are so many elements and instead of element size go to number of divisions and that is a one okay and then generate it so now you can see that after that so there in between the nodes there are only one there is only one element so now there are one two three four nodes and three elements so next in the model need to create a name selection and what is that and why is because displacement is required at that node which is in the center and then element forces are required for member one and two so here that node three is actually node one and then element one and three so they are elements so for that one steps for that one go to selection mesh by id and create name selection and how is that possible so here in the selection and then mesh by id so click node and node one is required so one so select that one and then create name selection so i am just going to here in the name selection so i am going to rename that as node and then element force uh, member forces for element these two elements are required now click on the element and it is one and three to so select so these are and then create name selection and this one i am going to rename as elements so now two selections one is for that node which is in the center that is done and the other one two elements are selected so the next step in the setup static structural need to apply boundary conditions so for that one first here that is static structural and for that one in the static structural so like as so first we need to restrict it convert it from 3d to 2d and for that purpose what is required for that purpose what is required i need to restrict any motion in z axis out of the plane so for that one need to go to sports displacement 
and for that displacement need to select all the vertices here and then box selection all vertices and then restrict their motion in so then constant restrict their motion along z axis so that is displacement so i renamed that boundary condition as displacement 3d to 2d next is to apply boundary condition as sports so they can be displacement or simply supported so for simpler sports so translational displacements are restricted like as for this one x displacement in because there are two reactions here so displacements along x and y they are zero for all those so i am going to apply simply supported for one and two and then for this one that same simply supported as in terms of displacement so for that one structural steel environment and then here in the sport is a simple sport so that is a simple sport okay so let's say one the so simple sport selecting that vertex apply then you can go here insert and then here you have somewhere simple sport so let's say two and then that one apply so these two simple sports and now for the top one here i'm going to use that as displacement in terms of displacement three and then selecting that node apply and now x zero y zero and z is free because i have already restricted that here 3d to 2d so but if you have 3d so then for pins uh, for simple sport you need to put all those three as zero so now these are boundary conditions applied here b and c you can see they are simple sport then this d is a displacement three and like for all those vertices to convert 3d to 2d next step is in the environment static structural environment load force in terms of the components and scoping method is geometry and vertex so for that one for that one here static structural and then need to apply a force okay so at this node two forces are being applied 50 kN in horizontal direction and 100 kN in vertical direction so for that one force i am going to name it as x and make sure that you are using appropriate unit for force which is newton so first select that vertex apply and then define by components and x component is 50 kilonewton okay so here you can see that it is 50000 newton so the next one you can go here right click on static structural insert a force there and i am going to rename that as y in the y direction so again the same vertex apply and then define by the components so minus 100 e raised power 3 so that load is being applied so these are the two loads applied so like 50000 newton and then 100000 newton okay so that one need yeah so that one is in downward and that is towards right next step is solution and what parameters are required for solution displacements at node 3 at there are required and then element forces at number 1 and number 2 are required that one i am going to calculate total deformation and then i am going to calculate that directional deformation so total that like although is not required but it will give uh, like how is going to deform and in the solution here direction so that is a total 
deformation then directional i am going to directional deformation along x direction and then you can go for another one along y so deformation directional and that is along y okay so now directional deformation here is the geometry selection i am going for named selection and that is required for that node 3 here and that is x axis and the other one is again geometry selection name selection so then here that node at this node and in y direction so that is now these two parameters they are added in the solution so the next one axial force they are required and for that good solution beam results and axial force and axial force for that name selection of those elements are required and for that one solution here are the beam results axial force so that axial force for whole of that and then here you can see solution insert beam to uh, sorry beam results axial force and axial force i am going to say it as elements and for that one instead of geometry selection go to name selection and then elements and that is for the elements it is being requested so now all parameter required for the solution they are added in the solution so the next one is solve so just select that and then solve it will take some time to solve so during that solution there are two warning here so just ignore those warnings so you can see that there are green tick on the solution so everything which is required for the solution that is available so the next one in the results directional deformation at node 3 of that question is required so for that one here that is a total deformation so i can put here like what as a maximum and minimum value of that and here in the results so that is show undeformed so that is undeformed and then this is the deformed one and then directional x so only on that node and i can change that units to millimeters so that is 3.3 millimeter in along x direction and 1.25 millimeters around y axis so these are two values so the answers for this problem are available like that is the horizontal displacement and the vertical displacement so what we got they are slightly different values like 1.25 and there is 1.32 and for this one it is 3.3 and there is 3.47 next step is to get results of axial force and for that one here you have axial force so axial force is so that is the maximum and minimum values of that and then axial forces for these two elements so for those two elements and i can use that prop to get those values so the axial force in the elements so in the one element so there are only two elements so one in that element is 62831 newton and the other one 20503 newton so the answers for that one like here is 62 kilonewton and the other one is 20 kilonewton and here like the red one is 62 kilonewton the other one is 20 kilonewton so that is all about this analysis so once again summary you need to start a project here static structural project then you need to add material using engineering data this one to create geometry or to model in design modeler then here in the geometry you need to assign material then mesh then applying boundary conditions in that is simple support then applying load 
once you have applied load and then the solution you need to request that which parameters are required okay and then then to solve that one and to get whatever results are required so that is these are the steps to solve that one so i hope you like this video thank you very much for watching so you can leave comments for feedback